Hello and welcome back. We are going to take a second look at um, Operation Battleaxe. I did receive the updated version. Um, like I said in the previous unboxing video, it um, I didn't, it was a, it was a preview copy. So this I think is the actual final copy now, and uh, I can report. I will not take you all through the rulebook again, but I everything that I pointed out in that. <laughs> Everything I think I pointed out in the um, the unboxing video or the first look at video uh, was corrected, so that's good news. Um, even uh, even put the asterisk uh, for for a limited range here, so that was kind of, that's kind of impressive. Glad to see that. Um, and actually, I mean, yeah, everything that was in the rule book, uh, any, any about everything I pointed out was corrected. So really good job to uh, Dark City Games. Uh, well, they listened to me, so I don't know how smart that was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but that's good news. It really is. Uh, and look at the map. They really, really improved this map. So uh, there's elevation. Um, these were not on the the, uh, the uh, preview copy that I got, but these elevation lines now have you know higher elevations actually marked uh, with the, with the line. So that's that's cool. Um, the the fort looks better. It looks like they added some graphics to that, and the road actually says road, which is cool. But it actually it kind of looks like a road now because it's has these black borders. So, um, yeah. So, like, don't be afraid to buy this game. If I if it's anything I said, <laughs> it would put you off. Uh, know that it's it's been corrected, and um, even have a ridge crest here labeled. So that's cool. These did fantastic job. Looks really good. Uh, what I want to do now is um, I do want to set up and just run through real quick. Uh, we're just going to go run through real quick this desert recon scenario. And the only reason I want to do it is just to kind of highlight these these range bands, which I thought I still think that's a really neat idea. Um, so I'm just going to set this up real quick. We are going to run through it. It won't take long, I promise. I don't think it will. Um, so let's see, what do we have? This is Desert Recon, a scouting group from the, um, I think that's the Western Desert Force. Is that right? Yep, Western Desert Force. We'll call them the British because I think that's who it is in this this scenario anyway, really. Uh, so anyway, yeah, the Western Desert Force drives across uh, flat desert to uh, basically they're scouting for enemies. So in this scenario, uh, we use the entire map and we ignore... Uh, all the, the terrain markers and all the fortifications and the fort. The only thing uh, that we pay attention to in this scenario will be the range bands, and that's it. This is open desert. So the, you have these um, Western uh, Desert Forces coming across, basically looking for enemies. So the setup for the British, they will have um, one... Uh, these cruiser tanks, and then two of these little light tanks, these little scouts, I suppose they are. They're armored vehicles with machine guns. They will start in range band F, and then the Germans only get one unit, but what a unit. <laughs> they get the Flak 88, which can hit anything, um, really, so that's probably all they're going to need. And let's see, where do we set that up? It can be set up anywhere within range band 1, so... It's not going to matter a whole lot here because it's really just kind of a... It's going to end up being like a turkey shoot. I'm just going to put them over here just at the edge of the map. Um, so you'll notice that the this German Flak 88 has a 4 with a line under it. And if you remember, that's that means that this Flak 88 can hit anything in its own range band all the way up to range band 4. So that's what that means. Uh, the tanks or the British over here unfortunately have a one with a line under it, which just means they can only hit things in their current range band. So, um, and then yeah, actually when they get down into range band one, if they make it, that is their range. Um, it's, uh, it's still, it's it's one. So they they could actually once they get into range band one, they could um, they could take shots at the flag. I don't think they're going to want to do that though. So the victory conditions are basically the Commonwealth has to get uh, one, let's see, the WDF player wins by successfully moving one vehicle off the western side of the board. So one of these units only takes one, has to exit the side of the board. And uh, let's see, the Axis just has to stop that. So that's, that's their... Um, that's their goal. And the solitaire rules, it does have the solitaire rules in here. 
you know, it tells you the Commonwealth player continues traveling west, trying to get his pieces off the board quickly as possible, and the Axis player will fire on the quickest vehicles first, attempting to destroy them by fire. So, yeah, that's it. Let's jump right in. Let's just start. I, like I said, I don't think it's going to take very long. I really just wanted to show you how the uh, range bands work in a scenario. So we will start, and we will start with the... Uh, I believe the uh, Germans get to fire first because, you know, these guys are just coming into range. The German Flak 88 spots them. And so before I fire, I'll explain it again. I, I, I explained this in the unboxing and I'll explain it again. Um, so the A signifies that this unit can attack armored units and its um, attack value is four. Um, and its survivability uh, value is 1. So this means that when this unit attacks, it rolls 4d6. Uh, the survivability means when it's taking fire, it would roll 1d6. So this unit is going to fire uh, 4d6. And if we look over at the British units, they all have a survivability of 1. So that's not too good. <laughs> that's... They're going to roll one. And, and remember that what we're looking for here is if the German unit rolls, uh, if it's if two of its uh, die rolls beat uh, the survivability die roll, it'll destroy the, uh, the British unit. And if they only get one, they'll pin it. So pinning would be good too here because it would stop these uh, tanks from moving. So let's go ahead and get started here. We are going to roll... Uh, first, I need to determine a target, and so if you remember from the from the setup, it says that the German unit is going to try to stop the faster units first. You know, you don't need solitaire rules to tell you that. If you're just sitting there playing this yourself, you're going to know that that as a the German unit is going to try to stop one of the faster units first. So let's just say he's going to fire at this light tank uh, first. So he's going to roll four d six. And that is two ones, a four, and a three. So that's two ones. There's the four, and there's the three. So now that light tank has to roll. You better roll high. So he's trying to get a four or higher. And he rolls a two. <laughs> so that's really bad. So that what that means is he's destroyed because... Um, these two, uh, these are the two highest um, die rolls for the German, and that light tank couldn't beat either one. So, two hires, uh, that's a kill. So this tank already, let's get that off of there, is destroyed. That's not good. Um, and so now we go to the uh, British player, and it's the British player's turn. So the way that movement works when you're in a range band. It costs 10 movement points to move from one, one range band to the next. So starting at the top, this cruiser tank, uh, it can only move into range band 3 because it only has a movement factor of 10. This light tank can move, its movement factor is 20, so it can move into range band 3. That's 10 movement points. And it can continue on into range band 2, so that's 20 movement points. And he's going to have to stop there because he's used up all of his movement factors. So then we go back to the German player. So the German player is, you know, he sees this faster light tank coming in. He is going to fire at it, try to stop it or at least pin it. So let's see what happens. He rolls his four attack. Well, that's, <laughs> there's one six. That's not good. A four and two twos. And now the light tank has to defend with his one survivability die. And he rolls a three, so, well, again, that's not good enough to beat. <laughs> this is going to be a short scenario. Um, so the, uh, the six and the four are both higher than the three, so he is eliminated. And so we come back to this, this cruiser. This tank can only move into range man two. That's ten movement factors, and he has to stop. Now, remember, he, he, his uh, range is 1, so he can only attack things in his current range band. He can't, still can't take a shot at that uh, flak unit. I don't think he could anyway, or if he'd even want to, because you know what, he's just trying to get off the board. So then we go back to the flak. 
who can now, he only has one target he can hit, so he's going to fire at this uh, cruiser. And let's see what happens. Uh, yikes. Well, the Germans are really rolling high here. One of the advantages, though, of having that uh, four-factor firepower, you know, that's 4d6 as he's rolling. And so now this uh, cruiser better roll a six. And he, <laughs> he rolls a one. So he's destroyed, um, and he is, he's, he's, he's wiped out. Uh, now, I will say, okay, that's, that's the scenario. I will say I played this a couple of times before I actually um, ran through this with you guys. And it, it didn't go like that at all. There was their units were pinned. Uh, it actually had one tank almost get out of the uh, get off the map. He was stopped though. Um, so well, you know, let's do it again real quick. Let's see what happens. Um, let's set these back up because it, it, it is kind of cool. Like it's like I said, this game is really. You saw how quick that was. I mean, this this is if you want to just do a quick battle, you're waiting for somebody to set up a larger game or something in the background. Pull this out and play it. I mean, it play, it can play really fast. Let's do it again. Okay, so we're coming in. Um, German flak is going to target this tank again, this light tank, and he's going to fire. Now you can tell this is um, well. There's two fours, a one, and a two. You can tell this scenario is is I think a little easier for the Germans than the <laughs> than the British. All right, so uh, this light tank he rolls his survivability die. And he rolls a three, so nope, he's destroyed. Watch the same thing happen again. Well, that's not good. So he rolled a three, uh, and the two fours beat the three. So, all right, the British player. So this gets to move into range man three because he has 10 movement points. Uh, the lighter tank can move two range bands because he has 20. And we go back to the Germans again. So he rolls his four attack. <laughs> you know, I'm really glad that um, this is on video because I just rolled four ones, and that's um, I, that's crazy. I don't think I've ever done that. So let's pull the four ones out. You would think that the uh, this light tank would be able to beat <laughs> the four ones. So let's see. He does. He rolls a five, so he's okay. He can keep going. Um, and now we go back to the British player. So that, that was good. That was really good for the British. So now this this uh, slower uh, uh, cruiser can only go into range man two. And so this um, light tank can now move into range band one. Still has, so it costs 10 movement factors to get into range band one. So he still has 10 left. And this is open desert, so now he can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's going to get him all the way to here. So, hmm, that's good for the British. Remember, they only have to get one unit to uh, exit off the map on the western edge over here. So now we go back to the Germans, and of course they're going to try to stop that light tank. So here we go. And, of course, the British are hoping that they roll four ones again. <laughs> I don't know if I can do that. A six, a five, a four, and a two. Uh-oh. A six, a five, a four, and a two. And so let's see what the light tank rolls. A six. <laughs> so that's actually really good news. Um, a six will actually... Um, that's what they were looking for, because that, that's, let me see, it's going to tie, so no effect. Not going to do anything. That's that's exactly what they wanted to see. And then, of course, now we go back up to the uh, cruiser. Uh, the cruiser spends his 10 movement points to move into range band 1, and we go, um, let's see, we go back to, well, well, that's it. That's the game, because now he moves, and he moves off the map. Um so there you go. Uh, really, you know, this first scenario, this is the uh, the first scenario in the scenario book. It's, it's more meant more to be like an introduction. So that's why it seems so quick and simple and fast. There are some uh, more detailed scenarios in, um, in Operation Battle Axe where you have a lot more units. Um, and, I, and maybe I'll get one of those. Uh, maybe I'll do a video of one of those at some point where you have, you know, you have, it starts, um, actually, I think... Um, 
is it Halfaya Pass, I think it was, where there's, you start, um, Halfaya Pass, I believe that, yeah, see, so you're, you know, the British set their forces up on the outermost range band. They would set up here, uh, and, and they have tanks and nine infantry. So that this would be a little more interesting if you're actually going to play a, a, a full scenario, and the Germans have a lot more units. And so in this one, the British would start a range band four, uh, and they're trying to, to kind of do the same thing where they're trying to get off the map. It's a lot more difficult in this one, though, because they, they're actually, they have to come in and then down this road and exit over here. And the, and the Germans have a lot more units that they can move and intercept with. So uh, don't put too much... <laughs> Don't think that every scenario it will play as quickly as that first one. Um, they won't. Uh, I picked that one on purpose because I knew it would play fast, and I knew we'd get through at least one. We got through two. That could be a record for my own understanding. I mean, we played uh, two complete playthroughs in, in one in one uh, session. So there you go. I just wanted to show you this real quick. This is um, Operation Battle Axe. Again, everything that I pointed out in the uh, the unboxing video was corrected, and the the map. Is, is much better now looks good uh, I think this is a, a neat little game uh, like I said it's fast quick playing I think that's a huge plus for it uh, and that is going to do it I hope you check out this game right, go over to Dark City Games like I said the developer is really good about listening to feedback and they're really I think they're um, really doing a good job with these little little folio games I, I like these these smaller uh, quick battles because sometimes you don't want to you know, pull something out the size of Empire of the Sun and <laughs> and play it for hours on end. Uh, sometimes you do, I guess, but uh, there are times when it's nice to have just something kind of quick like this. So there you go. Thanks for watching uh, again. Uh, please leave feedback, comments down below over at Armchair Dragoons or uh, head on over to Dark City Games. And I'm sure that the, the designers would love to hear feedback on this one. Uh, all right. Thanks for watching. And I will be back soon with another video.